DNA cloning refers to how we build customized DNAs for various experiments in cellular and molecular biology, not to be confused with the cloning of whole animals like Dolly the sheep. We often need to study a specific DNA, RNA, or protein, but the natural version of it expressed in the cell needs to be tweaked a little bit so we can study it efficiently. For example, we might want to add a fluorescent tag to see a specific protein under the microscope. Remember the central dogma in biology, DNA encodes RNA encodes protein. So whichever type of macromolecule needs to be studied, it is originally expressed from DNA. That is why we clone at the DNA level. For ease, we often work with small functional circular DNAs on the order of 10,000 base pairs called plasmids that express the DNA of interest. Plasmids can replicate and be maintained in a cell and remain independent of the genome, and they will continually express this protein of interest. Here's an example of a classic cloning experiment. Remember what we want, to overexpress a tagged protein in the cell. We have a plasmid expressing the DNA for a protein. In this example, the human histone. We want the histone to fluoresce for our experiments. They usually don't. So we will add the DNA encoding GFP, which stands for green fluorescent protein. We borrow this DNA sequence from the jellyfish. The original method to clone DNA used a series of purified enzymes. First, molecular scissors, called restriction enzymes, cut the plasmid. These enzymes recognize a very specific sequence of DNA. Second, the GFP DNA is also cut with the same restriction enzyme. Third, we mix the two cut DNAs together. Their ends have a special affinity for one another left behind by the restriction enzymes. Fourth, an enzyme called the ligase bonds the remaining gaps in the DNAs to make a new plasmid with GFP fused to a histone. This plasmid can then be introduced to human cells, allowing us to study a bright green tagged human histone by fluorescence microscopy.